so it will match means to one more session of your structure of atom so we've already started the chapter with the basic index given then gradually i've taught you what what subtopics are to be studied in the chapter then i started with the first concept that is your cathode ray what is it first topic we've decided to study cathode rays anode rays as discovery of neutron after that gradually we'll go into the rutherford's model thomson's model heisenberg uncertainty principle shorting the equation like that gradually into the topic so now after the particular cathode ray experiment now what concept did you understand you have understood cathode ray contains electrons we have already studied the properties and this is going to travel from cathode to anode that is what we have studied isn't it why does it travel cathode to anode because it contains negatively charged electrons now after that topic the related topic is thomson's jj thomson's e by m ratio experiment very important experiment basically this is derived from the cathode ray properties only the cathode ray discharge tube experiments only the same concept but we have studied in a separately so whenever you are listen you are asked to write what is e by m ratio how how should it be explained this is how you will start so basically this concept was introduced by jj thompson so what is e by m ratio e by m ratio stands for specific charge right right let's see what's going to happen now base what did we study we have studied whenever you have cathode ray right it's going to travel in a straight line in this direction now when you place this cathode ray okay let us write this as cathode ray so to this cathode ray you are placing one two external circuits one terminal could be the positive terminal the other would be the negative terminal let us join these two here fine now when this cathode ray comes and hits this point immediately this undergoes a deflection isn't it why this is a positive terminal and this contains electrons negative and positive get attracted immediately this takes a deflection in this direction so what is the path of uh, uh, this in the path for observed is a parabola so let us draw a coordinate axis here in this direction so first important thing you should remember is path observed is parabola right so as soon as you see the parabola first important thing it has coordinates and coordinate axis and the coordinate axis we have drawn the two coordinates which are present here let us join these here and join this here coordinates are x or y what is the straight line curve which you have learned the straight line for a straight line straight line equation is y is equal to mx but now this is not a straight line this is a parabola isn't it so for a parabola y is equal to a k x square fine so using this data jj thompson has given or derived the formula for finding y what did he find we he has observed or he has given us a formula that is equal to y is equal to just observe carefully yes x square is there only that k value is small e into capital e by 2 m v square this is the uh, formula which is given let us see what are the parameters y okay the coordinate x also is the coordinate now what is e e is nothing but charge of electron which we t which till now is not dis dis discovered only so we will do that charge also from millikan experiment oil drop experiment next comes capital e capital e is the applied electric field applied electric field this one and this one so how is it measured volt per meter next comes to okay what is m now m is the mass of electron so mass of electron not discovered yet later we will be writing as 9.31 that is different but mass of electron not yet discovered what is v v is a velocity of that particular fast moving cathode ray velocity gradient or velocity of electron or the speed of the movement of electron now what what do we know here we know why from this graph we know capital e electrical field from this we can measure isn't it next comes your v velocity i can measure y also i can measure x also i can measure so finally i can find out e by m ratio so e by m ratio after writing or substituting the values in this which was found to be minus 1.75 
8.8 into 10 to the power of 8 coulomb per gram. This is your E by M ratio. Very important value. You need to remember this because you are you'll be solving numericals based on E by M ratio also. Fine. Now to verify this particular concept, what did we what did we apply? He has applied electrical field on either side. Now to verify the value of E by M ratio, the same concept he has taken instead of electrical field, he has applied magnetic field. Now let's see what are we going to get using magnetic field. So when I have to take the magnetic field, how how did he arrange this he has taken the same cathode ray but here he has applied what electrical field in this direction now you're going to apply magnetic field for this you're going to take two bar magnets one is a north pole one is a south pole now this cathode ray which travels in a straight line it has traveled in this direction once it comes into means under the when it uh, comes into the influence of the mag magnets immediately it takes a spiral curve and then it travels straight Yes, so now this is a circle, so I'm going to take the radius. Now, according to Thomson, Gigi Thomson, formula for this is R is equal to, let me write here, R is equal to, here MV is in the denominator, here MV is the numerator, MV by small e by cap by b. This is the radius. Now, what is this b? Okay, let us come back from here. R is the radius, fine. M is a mass which we don't know, E is a charge which we don't know, V is a velocity of the cathode ray. What how speed is the cathode ray traveling? And next, V is a magnetic field which is measured in Tesla. That is important, isn't it? So B is measured in Tesla. So basically, here you have M by E ratio. When you inverse it, reverse it, he has got a value that is E by M ratio. He has got the same answer exactly like this. That is minus 1.7. 588 into 10 to the power of 8 coulomb per gram. Hence, both the values are matching. Hence, the value is verified. This is the observation of your J.J. Thompson. Let's come back and calculate. Now, we have two terms to find out. What are the two terms? One is a charge and one is a mass. Charge of the particular cathode ray or the charge of the electron was discovered by Millikan oil drop experiment. So let's come back and learn Millikan oil drop experiment. Very interesting, easy, but from there only you will be calculating the charge. Then we'll go to the next step that is mass. And finally, we'll divide the whole concept and get the value. Right. So welcome back again. Now, till now we have studied E by M ratio. Now, let's come back and see the next important concept which was done or which was, you know, demonstrated by Millikan. So, Millikan oil drop experiment is a very famous experiment. Why is it famous? Because it has given us the value of charge of an electron. So, till now in the earlier one, we had two things to learn. One was charge of an electron was not understood. And next, mass of an electron also we have not calculated. Till now, it was not discovered. Then in 1909, Millikan has discovered or given us the value of charge of an electron through a particular experiment called Millikan oil drop experiment. So what does it contain? When we see the construction of this, the first important thing you just see, this is the most important concept. This is called atomizer. So what did he do? He has picked up an atomizer. What is atomizer? Just like your deodorants. When you spray a de deodorant, you have a spray of liquid, isn't it? So what is happening in atomizer? He has taken in the inside the atomizer he has picked up pine oil. So, what does it do? What is the role of atomizer? Basically, atomizer, it allows or the liquid, converts the liquid into, you know, uh, drops of, or just like of, uh, what do you say, uh, fast moving particle, means liquid converted into drops, the, that, uh, just like your, uh, what do you say, spray, how was the liquid converted into small, small drops, isn't it? Just like that, your DO spray, the same way, the pine oil is, when you push oil with the rubber, uh, the sun uh, knob here, when you just pump this atomizer here immediately the pine oil whatever is there in the atomizer is sprinkled out in the form of a spray here the liquid is converted in the form of a spray then then what did he do he has after this atomizer he has arranged two electrical plates here in this direction one one plate both are charged one is a positive terminal one is a negative terminal then what did he do? A small aperture here in this direction. Fine. So now, second important thing. This is first one is done. Second, plates are done. Then what did he do? He has placed a telescope in, on, on the right hand side through which you observe the movement of the oil drop. Done? Yes, that's the third thing. Next, fourth important thing. He has also placed x-rays in this. So let us see step by step. So first one, atomizer. 
second electrical plates which are charged third the telescope which is arranged fourth is your x-rays now what happens when the atomizer when you just uh, hold the atomizer and when the oil drops are pumped into this chamber they come uh, get into the chamber in the form of a just sprinkle just like uh, like oil spray then what happens this oil drop starts entering into, uh, into this particular plate and enters to the aperture of this electrical plate and this is closed right now this oil drop from here enters to the aperture and then drops in during this process what happens the x-rays whatever are there which are irradiated into this chamber it's going to ionize the gas which is present here there's a lot of gas present inside the chamber isn't it these x-rays are going to ionize the gas when they ionize the gas one what what happens during this process the ions are released isn't it particles charged particles are released those are absorbed by this oil drop when this is absorbed by the oil drop what happens they attain a negative charge that is most important what is that x-rays are eliminate or x-rays are eliminated illuminated and what do they do once they illuminate it they start ionizing the gas which is present in this chamber they when okay let us write when condition is when they start ionizing are you ionizing the gas present in the chamber okay present in the chamber then what happens when it ionizes what will happen due to this ionization immediately the oil drops it attains a negative charge on them thus oil drop attains negative charge fine so now what happens this because of this negative charge there are two concepts which you should remember here or understand here what are they first oil drop has gravity weight isn't it because of this weight what will happen it is dragged under the gravity it, it is pulled down under gravity that is the first thing which is going to happen so when it is dragged under gravity first is gravity pull or gravitational pull so gravity or gravity let us write gravitational pull so gravitational pull is one thing which the oil drop uh, exhibits because already it is negatively charged and it attains or it, it, it gets that influence of the gravitational pull now this velocity is called terminal velocity which i am going to name it as v1 first is a terminal velocity v1 next important concept i said oil drop attains a negative charge yes now what happens there is a positive terminal which is present above that now one is a gravitational charge terminal velocity and next one the second one would be it is going to be dragged by the electrical field now one more terminal velocity also acts that is v2 one is a this one one more is a viscous drag gravitational pull is one one is a viscous drag also why because it is a positive terminal both so with these two uh, things the formula was uh, uh, denoted or determined by this one stock so that is called the stock formula according to that when they've calculated the value you just remember the value the mass the charge of electron was found to be charge of electron it is denoted by which one it is denoted by e isn't it yes it is equal to 1.6022 into 10 raised power of minus 19 because it is charged it is coulombs this is how is oil drop millikan oil drop experiment first one second two this is three okay you can go with one these are two third is a uh, telescope fourth is the x-rays fifth is the terminal velocity down is the gravitation pull next to the viscous drag with that the charge of electron was calculated to be 6.022 tennis power of minus 90 coulombs now let's come back and calculate the mass of electron Right. Now, we have already seen the calculation of E by M ratio and also the charge from Millikan oil drop experiment. How much was that? The charge from Millikan experiment was <coughs> the calculated value from Millikan experiment. From Millikan experiment, E was found to be 
इलेक्ट्रॉन is one first one in terms of kilogram it is equal to 9.9.1 tennis per of minus 31 kilogram per electron this is your answer so this is the mass so we have got three one is charge of electron e by m ratio of electron as well as mass of electron you need to remember and memorize all the values so this is your complete information about your cathode ray starting from the cathode ray properties e by m ratio of by john thompson next millikan oil drop experiment next calculation of mass now let's come back and do the next important model your thompson's or watermelon watermelon model of thompson 